and Hope started our day at the Keith and Worth Valley Railway with plenty of free parking, it seemed an ideal choice. An attractive station, it features amongst other things a Buffy car as a permanent fixture. The loco being used today is the standard Class 2, having seen service on many different lines across the country during its time with British Rail. The original restoration was completed in 1993 and the locomotive ran until 2003 when it was withdrawn. After an overhaul, it returned to service in 2018. As we pulled out of Oxen Hope, we passed other locos and were soon heading towards Howarth, well known home of the Bronte sisters. Unfortunately, the weather was cloudy and dull on the day we visited, but we weren't going to let that spoil our day out. Pulling into Howarth, we got our first sighting of the White Rose Yorkshire Steampunks, who were waiting to travel with us. They certainly brightened up the dull day. Between Howarth and Oakworth, we passed through Mythelm's Tunnel, which was featured in the Railway Children film and can be seen in Pink Floyd's The Wall. Before long, we arrived at Oakworth, but again we opted to stay on the train. After a brief stop, the train progressed, but we were to miss Damon's due to being sat on the wrong side of the carriage. As we approached the double track, we had to significantly slow down so that the passing loop could be handed over to the signalman.
after passing through Ingrove Tunnel, the station immediately appeared on our left. Like all the stations, it is full of character with many items of interest from days gone by. Of interest to us, as it was built in our hometown of Lincoln, was this little diesel electric shunter called James. Built in 1959 by Ruston and Hornsby, weighing 28 tonnes and a top speed of 17 mile an hour, it saw service at Stewart's and Lloyd Steelworks before being sold for scrap in the 80s. After restoration, it arrived at Ingro in 1990. Ingro is also the home of the two rail museums, admission to which is included in the Rover ticket price. After passing through an extensive bookshop, we entered the carriage works offering one of the best collections of restored carriages from the earliest, at 1896, through to 1950. It has to be said, they highlight the differences between first and third class travel. Most carriages are stickered, showing the many films in which they have been used, but the most memorable for a lot of people would be the railway children. Lord Mayor, as named, was built by Hudswell Clark in 1893 and is the smallest at the KWVR, and indeed its size would be more akin to narrow grade railways. It is now a permanent static display. Being back on the train and having left Oakworth, there is only a small amount of countryside during this section. And it wasn't long before the outskirts of Keithley were coming up on us. Pulling into Platform 4, you can see many attractive and original features, including the stunning glass canopy. On Platform 3, however, a lot of details are lacking but there is hope that the canopy will be restored in the future. The Keithley station connects to the National Rail Network, so it is possible to arrive from Oxenhope and travel to the rest of the country. The station is owned by Network Rail and leases platforms 3 and 4 to KWVR, while platforms 1 and 2 are leased by Northern Rail. After our lunch, we headed back to the same platforms we had arrived on. The engine had been uncoupled and was being taken to what now became the front of the train. Here we go. 
doing a tour somewhere on the east, uh, and the east coast, but it had a support coach with it as well as a yeah. coach. So beautiful machine, stunning. Yeah, I've been behind it three times, set up Carlisle. Yeah, stunning machine. Yeah, we've just seen that we've been to oh, amazing. Gradient puts a bit more of a demand on the locomotive leaving Keithley, but we were soon trundling along through what appears to be countryside, but is in fact quite built up either side beyond the trees. We notably passed the Timothy Taylor's Brewery, one of my more enjoyable tipples, before pulling back into Ingrove. After a short stop, the train heads through the 135 metre long Ingrove Tunnel. And yet again we missed the very short platform of Damon's as the camera was on the wrong side of the carriage. The footbridge over the railway at Oakworth connects the station to the walk into Howarth with its many attractions most notably centred around the Bronte sisters. After being somewhat deserted, anticipation of the train's arrival soon gathered some onlookers to watch us pull into the station.
After skipping Oakworth, we decided to get off the train at Howarth and have a look round for somewhere to have an afternoon brew. This was indeed successful, with a small friendly cafe coming to the rescue. The stop was also a photo opportunity for the steam bunks, but before long we were off back to where we had started at Oxen Hope. After again using the head shunt so the loco can move to the front of the train, it was to start the journey all over again. But it would be for the last time today.